Hey everyone, it's Eric Thor here and today we're watching Psych2Go's six signs you're not an INFJ. So today we're finding out if we are INFJs or not. What does Psych2Go think and do their methods work? Always so cute. Hey Psych2Goers, welcome back to another video. I want a blanket are like that. Really an INFJ? Yeah. Out of the groups of personality types, the two most similar and mistyped are INFJ and INTJ. Oh. They are both reserved, intuitive, goal-oriented, and big-picture thinkers. Sure. However, the difference lies in how each personality type approaches the world. These are six signs you are not an INFJ. Oh, I like that bird. Type. Wow, that's a, quite a disclaimer there. Basically, they're saying it doesn't work. Make decisions using impersonal logic. If you find that you prefer logic and objectivity when making choices, you might not be an INFJ. I Wait a moment. So INFJs make decisions based on feelings, not on logic. INFJs approach the world differently from thinking types because of their primary sensing. INFJs are more what? attuned to emotional nuances and sensibilities. They're prone. Okay, first of all, INFJs account for the feelings of the group, but use logic, introverted thinking to resolve those problems. INFJs look at what other people are feeling and then they go into their third function, introverted thinking, and then they think, what can I do about that? How can I logically resolve these problems? And we make decisions based on visualizing and overthinking decisions. We process things deeply and we form an idea of what we should do and where we are going. And we use our intuition heavily when making decisions. By the way, did you know that only 25% of you all are subscribed to my channel? My question is why? Why are you not subscribed? Are you embarrassed? Are you afraid that your mom, dad, or your partner is going to find out? Let's be real. They probably watch my channel as well. On to taking other people's feelings into consideration when sure. making decisions. On the other hand, personality types with dominant thinking traits prefer to analyze and view things through logic and seek to understand how things work through systems, not abstract concepts. They're typically drawn to ideas. They're totally missing the point. Some INFJs are intuitive dominants. They are not feeling dominance. They are not thinking dominance. They are intuitive dominance. That means we are primarily cerebral, cerebral types that think about the world in our heads. We imagine, visualize, and reflect on what we are experiencing through the use of intuition. So saying feeling or thinking <laughs> being the dominant factor here is completely missing the point. Personality types that share this trait are INTJs, ISTPs, and INFPs, though they are all in What? How are they combining these three groups of people? Introverts. They all have dominant thinking functions. Number two. The INFP has dominant thinking functions? Am I like missing something here? Are they like trolling me? You do not shy away from a challenge. Do you welcome criticism? If so, you most likely are not an INFJ. One That's weakness true. of INFJs is that they take criticism to heart. For yeah. some INFJs, conflict is distressing. Because sure. INFJs are sensitive to other people's emotions, yeah. harsh words offend them easily, even if it is an offhanded remark. Number three, you love being surrounded by people. If you prefer large social settings, then you might not be an INFJ. This trait is typically associated with extroverted types. So, What they forget here is most INFJs, and this is my experience, like to spend a lot of time by themselves processing and forming a worldview. And then once they've gotten to the point where they've developed extroverted sensing, okay, this happened to me when I was like 15 years old. That's when I was prepared to break out of my head and go out into the world. 
then we like to go on stage. We like to talk about our ideas. We like to go out and put our ideas out there. We don't want to stay in our heads for the rest of our lives just thinking about the world. We know that we want to translate and explain and transform the world through the use of our ideas. We want to get people to see and hear what we are thinking about. So we like to be out there in order to communicate our ideas and to get our thoughts out there. So chances are you might not be an INFJ. You could type as an extrovert or even an introvert with secondary extroversion sensing. One thing that INT Basically, they're creating a false dichotomy where if you are an introvert, you're always alone. And if you're an extrovert, you're always out with other people. But in reality, it's more complicated than that. Introverts are people that have a strong personal worldview that they are trying to communicate or implement in the world. A strong value system or a rational or moral compass or an existential framework that they want to implement in the world. Extroverts, they are people with a strong curiosity, a desire to learn, a desire to understand the world, that they want to uh, take information that they experience, they want to go out, meet people, make connections, and then they want to find ways to align that with their personal values. They want to connect with people and they want to have meaningful and impactful relationships. Introverts start inside and go out. Extroverts start outside and go in. TJs and INFJs share is their nonconformity. Neither personality sure. types accept social norms just because. As a child, they may have felt left out or like they didn't fit in. Neither are prone to small talk. That's INFJs common to all intuitives. Tend to be blunt with their nonconformity, whereas INFJs are more prudent when navigating social norms they dislike. Sure. Number four, you're not super attracted to humanitarian jobs. Do you feel like your purpose in life is to help and assist others? Yeah. If not, you probably are not an INFJ. Though most people, regardless of personality type, like to volunteer and help others, INFJs make it their life's mission to be yeah. of service. Like a true idealist, true. INFJs are concerned about doing something that betters the human condition. They want to help others. So it's natural for them to gravitate towards humanitarian causes. For their sure. personality type allows them to shine in roles as activists or catalysts for social change. Some examples of famous INFJs. I've been politically involved and in Gandhi. I've been politically involved. I've been in various movements uh, for most of my life. I got politically active when I was 12 years old, and I spent more than 10 years in that. Okay, I've had a break from it in the later years because I had to get my uh, education in order. I get to had to get my finances in order, but I always like humanitarian action and it's something very important to me. Eleanor Roosevelt and Florence Nightingale. Number five, you love to test theories in real life. Do you find yourself testing your hypothetical? Is that a sign you're not an INFJ? What ifs in real life? If so, you might not be an INFJ. Really? You might be an extroverted intuitive type instead. Extroverted intuitive types love exploring and finding inspirations from the world around them. They are sure. more focused on testing out their ideas in real time rather than now they're creating two dichotomies at the same time. First, uh, they say extrovert intuitives like to be out and learn about things in the world. Then they say uh, extrovert intuitives like to test out their own ideas in the world around them. Generally, what I've experienced to be the case is ENFPs like to learn and observe things and then come up with theories that explain what they have observed and what they have figured out. What I've noticed with INFJs is the reverse. INFJs like to think about and formulate a theory of things, and then they like to go out and search for information that can be explained using these theories. Other than speculating, some personality types that share this trait are ENFPs, ENTPs, and INFPs. Number six, you're in tune with your own emotions and have no trouble voicing your emotional needs. Do you open up to others easily? Look at how they switched their point there. First sign you were not an INFJ was you made decisions based on emotions. Then, now they're saying INFJs are not very much in tune with their own emotions. There's, they're basically doing two things at the same time. And okay, I'm more inclined to agree with the later than the first. It's true, INFJs tend to start out oblivious to their own feelings and experiences. 
we are first focused on other people's emotions before we start developing a relationship to ourselves. It took me until I was about 25 before I really started to dig into my own emotions and to introspect and to try to understand myself. Until then, I had been completely focused on trying to help and support other people. And here, here is the thing. INFJs need introverted feeling to become complete people. Introverted feeling is probably one of the most important functions that an INFJ can develop. When you get there, that's going to be like the biggest shift of your life. If you do, then you might not be an INFJ. Because of the INFJ's nurturing nature, they often act as emotional support for others. True. They also have a tendency to be highly empathetic. However, they rarely voice their own emotional needs. Let me disagree with people here. INFJs are focused on other people's emotions, but INFJs don't really develop their empathy until later in life. It takes a long time before people in general develop empathy. Truth is, while INFJs can be sympathetic to other people at a young age and want to help other people and tend to be very concerned with other people, it takes a long time for INFJs to develop the base emotional intelligence to actually understand and be able to actually understand emotions and other people's experiences and also how to navigate and support other people in a good way. Many INFJs, especially at a young age, struggle with codependency, have one-sided relationships, struggle to accurately understand and interpret other people's feelings and are often lost on how to navigate social relationships. Only with age and maturity can you become empathetic. Empathy is not an inherent trait. Empathy, emotional intelligence, comes from being able to take time to introspect and understand emotions in yourself and in other people so that you can understand the heart of what people really are feeling. Not what they're telling you that they're feeling. Not the emotions you think that they have. Not what you projected or the idea that you projected on them to be but what they are really feeling and how you can really be of help. Unfortunately, they can slip into the role of people pleasing and put their needs in the back seat. Sure. Mature INFJs learn how to diplomatically protect their needs while also being of service to others. If you find it easy to open up to other people, you might be a dominant extroverted feeling. An ISTP finds it easy to open up to people? In what reality? So, did you relate to any of these signs? Are you an INFJ? Let us know in the comments below. Although have Yeah. Are you an INFJ? Did you relate to any of these six signs? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in another video.